Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why and how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio, and today we're going to talk about should you be in sales? First of all, I got to tell you, I'm really tired right now because uh, yesterday I did my first sales mastery intensive. Uh, if you don't know what that is, go to salesmasteryintensive.com. It's 12 people for 12 hours doing 12 sales modules. So it was a long day, had 12 people in the room, and I think we got a lot done. I love working with small groups because you can really help them with their process as opposed to just doing a generic sales training program. So again, if you want more information for the next Sales Mastery Intensive, go to salesmasteryintensive.com or just go to victorantonio.com. But I really want to talk about, and yesterday was again, it reinforced what I want to talk about today. Should you be in sales? Isn't that a question that people often have? Now, some of the people that showed up to the Sales Mastery Intensive, you know, they knew they belonged in sales, but there were about two or three people that were, I can tell that they questioned whether they should be in sales. The problem was that it really wasn't about them, it's how they're approaching the game of selling. See, to me, selling is such a great profession. How many other professions, can you think about this, I mean, really think about this. How many other professions can you work in where you can, to a large extent, to a large extent, control your financial destiny? In other words, how much money you make. Because sales is all about hustle, grinding it out, getting out there. And the more you do it, the more you close, the better your skill sets get, the more money you make, and the better you'll live. As opposed to just working for a base salary where this is what you get, and maybe every three years, or every year rather, you'll get a 3% increase. With selling, man, you know, when you, when you hit your quota at 100%, you know, bam, you get some good money. When you pass 100%, maybe there's some sales accelerators in there where you get more commissions, you make more money. That's why. I love selling because you really can control, to a large extent, your financial destiny. Having said that, the question always comes back is, should I be in sales? And if you're thinking, listening to this and you're saying, you know, am I a salesperson? Am I really a salesperson? If you're having one of those existential crises where you're going, oh my God, maybe I shouldn't be in this business, guess what? This podcast is just for you. So I'm going to go through seven things to help readjust your mindset and give you things to think about. And at the end of the day, you decide whether you should be in sales. But at least I want to clear the, the I guess, the fog in your brain so you can think clearly. Now, the first one is, you know, is it nature or is it nurture? Are people born natural salespeople or do you have to nurture that skill? Well, there was a study done, and I don't know if it's still, hold valid, it's still valid, but it was done about four or five years ago by Sales Benchmark Index, where they estimated, and again, this is always a rough number, you know, statistics, you can always bend them either way, but I still thought the number was interesting. They estimated that 13, one, three, 13% of salespeople are natural born salespeople. 13%, only 13%, which means the other 87%, I'm included in that 87%, have to work at it. Look, I started out as an engineer. I didn't start out as a salesperson. I had to figure out how to sell. So I actually had to develop the skill set. I'm part of that 87% that had to work at getting better at selling. So only 13% are natural born salespeople. The other 87 have to work at it. Well, how big is that pool of 87%? Well, the Bureau of, Labor St Bureau of Labor Statistics came out with a study in 2012, and it found out something, you know, rather interesting, that one out of nine people employed in the U.S. is a salesperson. Wow, one out of nine employed in the U.S. is a salesperson. But that begs the question, what about the other eight of nine? Interesting enough, when they looked at the eight of nine who were not in sales, they discovered something fascinating. They spend, this eight of nine, spend 40% of their day influencing and persuading other people. Which means what? They're in sales. So we're all in sales. Whether you're a direct salesperson or you're a leader or a manager or you know, you're trying to influence a coworker, you're selling, we're all in sales. So that's the first big one, we're all in sales. Second, is it nature versus nurture? Again, 13% are natural born salespeople, the other 87 have to work at it. So it's a skill set that you can develop. Now, third, 
Do you have to love what you're selling? Because some people right now listening to this podcast says, you know, Victor, I like selling. I said, you know, I'm just, I'm just not feeling this product or service. I'm not feeling good about selling this product or service. And you're thinking, I don't love this product, Victor. That's why I can't succeed because I don't love this product. In fact, when I talk to all these sales coaches, they say, you know, the first thing you have to do is you have to love your product. Well, I totally disagree with that. And, but let me qualify what I mean by that. Should you love what you're selling? Yeah, of course you should. But what you're missing is, what's more important rather, is that you should love what it does for your customer. Let me say it again. It's okay to want to love your product, but that's egoistic. That's thinking about yourself. What you should love is what it does for your customer. If your product, let's say you, you like your product, you don't love it, you like your product, but you love the fact that it helps co companies increase their revenue. It helps them reduce their cost. This product or service helps them expand markets. I love what it does for my customer. I want you to focus not on what, how you feel about the product, but how it impacts your customer. Because when you know you're helping customers, you feel better about selling it. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's okay to love your product, but it's also okay to like it. What is mandatory is that you love what it does for your customers, okay? Number four, do you need a sales process? I've talked about this in my past sales podcast. A lot of people basically don't close enough deals because they don't have a sales process and they confuse not closing with being bad at sales. Maybe you're good at sales, but you're too lazy and you don't have a sales process because you're one of those people that like to go, one of those people that like to go in there and just say, I'll wing it, Victor. I'll just kind of flow with the customer. You see, you know, I hear this phrase a lot, Victor, I don't like a pro sales process. I'd rather have an organic conversation. What the hell does that mean? All conversations should be organic, but nonetheless, there should be a process in that conversation. One study showed that you'll, you know, person with an actual process will close 48% more deals, right? Generate two times the revenue. Another study showed that you can actually shrink your sales cycle. In other words, how fast you sell by 37% just by using a sales process. So maybe the fact that you're not closing a deal is why you're not successful at selling. It has nothing to do with your skill set. It has to do with the fact that you're not using a tool called the sales process. Number five, I know what you're thinking. Victor, again, sales processes are too rigid. They don't work. I read this book, I read that book, and these processes don't fit. Well, I understand when you say it won't work for me. You're right and you're wrong at the same time. You're right in the sense that many sales processes or processes are actually too rigid, but they do work if you adjust them for you. Remember, a sales process is a suggestion, an outline of what you should be doing. But again, I always love the phrase that Bruce Lee used. Remember, he came up with Jeet Kune Do, his own style of fighting because other form of, forms of fighting like karate were too rigid. So he said, let me come up with my own fluid form. And he came up with Jeet Kune Do. And he has this great quote, now, quote, now paraphrase. It, when it comes to a style, he said, absorb what is useful, discard what is not, and add what is uniquely yours. Oh, that's beautiful. Think about a sales process. Now, absorb what is useful in that sales process that you're being taught discard what you cannot use, what is not, and then infuse it, add what is uniquely yours. Make the sales process yours so you feel comfortable saying things, doing things, and it is you. You are authentic in the sales process and you'll feel better about yourself. Again, you need a process, come up with your own, keep tweaking it till you get it to where you want it. Six, you have to set your own personal KPIs. I can't emphasize this enough. The best way to know if you're getting ahead in sell is to know, how do I measure myself? What are my own key performance indicators? You've heard this about in business, everybody has key KPIs, right? For corporations, but do you have personal KPIs? Key performance indicators. For example, how many calls do you make a day? What's your goal? How many calls should you be making a day? What's the number of opportunities you should have in your pipeline? Write that number down. You know, what is my close rate? Are you measuring your close rate? That should be a KPI. You know, what's your average order size? So if it's X, maybe it should be X plus in the next quarter. Again, measure yourself. Or what's your sales cycle again? You know, 
It's one month, maybe I should shorten it to three. What do I need to do? Find your own KPIs that reinforce what you need to be doing to make sure you're better. Last but not least, number seven, expect to struggle. That's part of the sales process, but you got to push through what I call the sales dip. The sales dip is almost like a sales rut, but it's something you have to push through. And most people don't push through, go back to their bad habits. Sometimes you have to push through, come up with a new sales process, add what is uniquely yours, discard what isn't, and find a way to sell your way. Keep adjusting. Don't be so hard on yourself. When you don't close a deal, don't say, I'm an idiot, I'm not good, I'm, I, I really suck at selling. Don't say that to yourself. Ask yourself this question, what did I learn? Ask yourself this other question, what could I do better? What did I learn? What could I do better? What do I need to adjust in my sales process? You take this advice, really think about it, really listen to this podcast over one more time because I really want you to absorb all seven points. Again, this is Victor Antonio thanking you for joining me on the Sales Influence Podcast. Don't forget to leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. By the way, for those of you who have, thank you very much. Also, check out my sales training website. You know the website, seminarsonselling.com. Also, check out what I mentioned earlier, my salesmasteryintensive.com, where you'll find, again, it's a great training program. If you need to up your sales game, you might want to consider the Sales Mastery Intensive, where you will get personal attention from me. Lastly, again, this is Victor Antonio saying thank you very much for listening. And remember, selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care. Every manager can feel it. The difference between a motivated, value-driven sales team and one that's stuck in a rut. CEOs know the difference too. They can see it clearly in the profit and loss columns. The question is, how do you get your team to this elite level? Is there something extra you can do to break through the remaining resistance and equip them with the right mindset to grow your business? Yes, there is. But you're not going to do it with one of those cheesy inspirational speakers or some self-proclaimed guru. What you need is someone with a real business track record to deliver key insights in a captivating way, to give your team the right tools for selling in today's tough marketplace. Enter Victor Antonio, experienced executive, innovative thinker, compelling speaker. He's ready to deliver the message you need your people to hear, not with a canned speech, but a customized dynamic keynote designed to deliver results. Bring Victor Antonio to your next event before the competition does.